Everybody's Tyler here at the Central Illinois Regional checking in with returning champions 41-43 Mars Wars. This team I love checking in with as many years as possible for it. They make such fantastic robots and this year absolutely no exception as well. Dual intake will be going into on this robot. I love their handoff and transfer mechanisms that they do as well. And this team has been trapping so successfully in their matches. Ranked really high here early on in Central Illinois Regional. Let's learn more about Mars Wars, what they have to bring here in Crescendo coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Olivia, let's start off with that dual intake system we're having. Talk to me about why it was important for your team to go with a dual intake and just overall the general process of it. So we decided to do two intakes because the idea of that if one breaks, we can have the other one still using in a match. Um, this year we have 3D printed pulleys on the end of our intakes um, and then we have belts and gears running through using, of course, Neo Vortexes to power these. Um, we have a front and a back. We made the front red so it's easier for us drivers and operators to tell which is side of the robot is which. And then this one's angled to tell to the mailman it can successfully go to the mailman. Here in the back, um, we go to, straight to the shooter for this one. And then we have rubber, rubber little rings on the back of them so we can make sure that when we're intaking, we're able to grab it and pull it into our robot from the ground. Okay, looking ready? at looking at this series of robots so far, when you were uh, making testing during your build season and stuff, any like major changes that you went through when developing this dual intake? Yeah, so we probably went through four iterations for these. A lot of the issues that we came across were the spacings for the pulleys. Um, a lot of it was either it would they'd be belt, jumping belts or they'd be way too tight and we'd be running too much torque. So that's where we added gearboxes um, to make sure that we're running less torque for the robot. Um, especially with these Neo Vortexes since they are new motors this year and we weren't totally sure how they were going to work for our intakes. And one of the things too, your handoff has been so smooth. We just kind of saw a little demo of that, but Eli, uh, walk me through more about how this handoff process works. Uh, why it's so important for your team as well too, because you're bringing a lot of versatility here in the Crescendo game. Yeah, so we really wanted to be able to make a last second change in case anything, in case we'd have it like supercharged. So we wanted to get the last note off. So we're able to pick up from the front intake and take it up here and then we can just take it straight back to the shooter and we have a sensor that stops it there and then we can also pick up from the front and bring it up here and then we can push it up to the amp spot as well so you know when you have that much motion in a note uh do you have any concerns with like either jamming or any major changes you have to make to try to just make that process really as smooth as it is yeah so when we originally had just like these bars we did have to add like rubber grip on it to kind of make it more smooth. But then after that, we've kind of worked it all out. Very cool. You know, and, and on this robot too, you know, from a scoring wise, do you, do you have a preference between like uh, scoring on the amp uh, versus scoring, uh, you know, in the speaker? Because I, when I watch your matches, it seems like you're really, really comfortable with the amp on there so far. And I saw some shuttling from you as well too, which was really cool. Yeah, so we'll usually just work around whatever our teammates can do. We're very flexible on it. So we can, we, we're very confident in our amp system. So we'll usually do that but we can shoot as well. Can we see what an amp shot looks like out of your robot? Sure. So it's very nice and smooth mm -hmm. process with your elevators. Looks really great uh, through this whole thing. You know, we mentioned earlier, your team has been scoring out a trap very consistently. And I think as the meta of this game evolves, that's gonna be so much more important uh, for teams to have as they continue to wanna win regionals and districts at this level as well. Uh, so Josie, talk to me more about what you have for the uh, trap mechanism. Why it's been so successful for you? Like talk to me about like the process and the testing you had to do to get to that space. So our trap mechanism, one of the things that has been super consistent with us is once they get it up in there, we have this grip right here, so it keeps it held in there. And our climbers, they come all the way up here. And then once they're up there, they'll shoot into the trap and they'll pull all the way down so that, that way they can reach perfectly to be able to get in there. Like that. And that process has been pretty quick for you. Um, I would say, I mean, you're climbing and getting a trap in what, 10, maybe 15 seconds, something like that, so. Yeah, one of the things our team wanted to be able to do this year was to be able to trap and then climb back down to be able to go score more points. So that way we could trap two or three in case our teammates weren't able to do that. Uh, that's really cool. Can, can we see how that trap score works? I know your climber might have to come up for that. Yep. So yep, Ty can get it in. 
Yep. So yeah, we go through first stage, second stage, trap up. Pulse down. Yep. And then this will lock in the chain. We have brackets over here that help lock our chain in place. So that way we make sure we're not sliding back down. And then when you're actually up the side, do you have anything that's stabilizing you against like the trap area or is it just kind of leaning against it? Just kind of leans against it. Say this kind of helps push it open, but not very much. Yeah, overall, this is a fantastic process. Congratulations on the success. So many teams had tried doing trap and it's, it's not been as successful as what teams wanted. So congratulations for having a very successful trap mechanism for that. Uh, let's talk vision on, on your robot as well. I noticed on here, uh, you got some custom vision ties. So talk to me more about you know what you're using uh, for your localization. And uh, I know we got a couple of things we're gonna show on screen as well. Okay, um, so our vision system last year, we were using Limelight like a lot of other teams. We determined that kind of wasn't powerful enough for the enhancement we, enhancements we wanted to have this year. So we have a Jetson board here that's kind of in, inside this case here. And that allows us to do a lot more computing, a lot more advanced things. Um, so the way it kind of works is it starts out with, you can call it a graph, where it drops kind of points or nodes as we drive around based on the encoders of the wheels here. So just based on, it starts with just odometry, but then that'll draw kind of a path or a dot by dot line out as it drives around the field, but that's not constrained to any one specific spot on the field. To do that, then we have our vision cameras here. They're pretty wide angle and they work on a global shutter. So they take the entire image at the same time. And then with that, we compute, we see the April tags in the corners of that. And there's an algorithm that we can use pretty easily to determine uh, the distance between the camera and the April tags. Uh, once that works, we, we kind of translate that just to the center of the robot. That way we know where the robot is relative to the tags. And then depending on how confident we are on that vision measurement, it'll be kind of like a spring. So if we're really far away, it'll be a less tight spring and it'll pull the, the path of the robot less tightly. But if it's, much, um, if it's much closer, then it'll be a much stronger spring and it'll pull it much, much closer uh, to where it's supposed to be on the field. Um, this allows us to know where we are anywhere on the field, not just when we press the button to shoot. And we integrate that into a lot of different things for our vision system. For example, our passing is actually automated. So when we see a tag on the other side of the field, our robot will know where it is on the field. And then that allows us to just press a button and we'll shoot across the field. It's really interesting to say that because yeah, watching the match when you were uh, shuttling, like your grouping was so tight yes. uh, in regards to where your notes were landing. It was right, you know, right next to that amp area where other teams really couldn't access. So that was really cool to see. So awesome. Any future plans uh, for programming as you look into uh, maybe your next event coming up just uh, a week from now in Iowa? Uh, looking into it, we kind of want to get our auto, auto, autonomous um, paths more locked down. Uh, they're working all right, but we want to get them kind of in a better spot and be more versatile to work with other teams better. Um, we've talked about maybe adding another camera on the back. We don't know if we have enough uh, GPU overhead to be able to do that. So we're going to discuss that. Um, and we also want to be able to, uh, we were going to add a button to press that will take us from on our side of the wing line. And if we press that, it'll try to drive us to the amp. So once we're on our side with a, a note in our robot, all we have to do is press a button and it should drive us to that amp scoring and it'll score in that autonomously. Well, Mars Wars, congratulations on a fantastic robot. A lot of cool stuff for people to learn on this as well too. So good luck here at the Central Illinois Regional, uh, keeping your title hopefully going once again and good luck throughout the rest of the competition season. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.